Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. Good evening. Blessed Epiphany greetings. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening for this service of Holy Communion on Epiphany evening. Also would like to say a word of welcome to those who may be joining us online as well. Thank you for joining us this evening. Epiphany marks the end of the Christmas season 
and it, it is the announcement of Christ's birth to all the nations through the Magi. And so that is why we have our sanctuary decorated with the flags of so many nations uh, this evening as a symbolic reminder that Christ comes to all people in all nations and he lives in the hearts of all people and works through our culture and our voices. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please come on in. Um, <laughs> Just have a couple of announcements uh, this evening. Um, if you have not picked up your offering envelopes for 2023, they are out in the gathering place on a table. And also, we um, I'm making an announcement on behalf of the Family Ministry Committee for a fundraiser for our youth for at Bricks Pizza. And if Pizza on uh, this coming, or yeah, this next Wednesday, uh, July, or <laughs> January 11th. <laughs> getting a little ahead of myself. January 11th sounds like a great idea. Please pick up a flyer and um, have pizza and uh, also support our, our youth group at the same time. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at the last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for Epiphany is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will shine over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 72 responsibly. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May all kings fall, fall down before him. All nations give him service. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. The second reading for Epiphany is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, 
as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, we have observed his star at its rising and have come to worship him. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? for we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it, is, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the hot child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening. Blessed Epiphany, greetings to you all. Today marks the end of Christmas and the beginning of a new season of the epiphany of Christ to all people and all the nations. When we celebrate epiphany, we are also standing in the shadow of the ancient church. And this, the festival of epiphany and the season of epiphany allows us to glimpse how early Christians celebrated the meaning and significance of Christ's incarnation, his birth, and his ministry. 
The celebration of Epiphany reaches back to a time even before the date for Christmas was established. Originally, January the 6th was the date upon which the Magi were commemorated along with Jesus' birth and Jesus' baptism. In other words, the festival of Epiphany was a sort of an omnibus. It was sort of a, a festival that celebrated several things at the, at the same time. And that was attested to very early by a fellow named Clement of Alexandria in, in about the year 200, far in advance of the setting of December 25th as a date for Christmas. What is so compelling about Epiphany is that early Christians seemed more concerned about the date of Jesus' baptism than of the date for his birth. From the very beginning, it seems that July, January, I got July on the brain, it seems that January the 6th was the date that was attributed to Jesus' baptism. From the earliest witness, going back to Clement in the year 200. In other words, after Easter, Epiphany is the oldest or second oldest festival of the church. Of course, we'll never have complete clarity about the emergence of some of the early festivals of the church. But what seems clear is that Epiphany comprised several things at the same time. Namely, the visit of the Magi, Jesus' nativity, his baptism, and the announcement to the nations that a savior dwells in our humanity. The significance of these several themes is that early Christians like us today sought to understand the meaning of Jesus' birth and through it to give meaning to their lives as disciples. Jesus' birth was linked to an announcement of sal salvation for all nations. It was linked to his baptism and it was linked to our baptism as the means of salvation. Epiphany was linked to the incarnation of Christ as the dwelling in our humanity, and it was linked to Jesus' ministry and his call to make disciples. For us as people still seeking to understand the meaning of Jesus' birth in the modern world, the season of Epiphany continues to offer us a window with a view upon our identity as Christians. In two days on Sunday, January the 8th, we will celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And then throughout the season of Epiphany, in turn, we will celebrate Jesus' calling of his first disciples. For two Sundays in a row, we will read about Jesus' good news proclaimed in the Sermon on the Mount. And then on the final Sunday of the season of Epiphany, we will see Jesus revealed in his divinity in the transfiguration. The season of Epiphany is a tour de force of the meaning and work of Christ and of our lives as Christians. This evening we celebrate the Epiphany or the manifestation of Christ to the Magi and the significance of Epiphany is that Jesus was born for all people and nations. Today's text from Isaiah reads, Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. And this is true. The gospel has traversed the earth and there are churches literally in every place and people celebrate in every language. The prophet Isaiah awaited the epiphany of a savior who would become the light of the world and the Magi represent all the world beyond Israel. The Magi mark the beginning of a new covenant with all nations and peoples. Paul as well wrote about this in the reading from Ephesians tonight. The Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise of Christ through the gospel. In other words, this is how we as non-Jews can become included in the promise of the Messiah. He comes for all nations and peoples. Indeed, this is why we decorate the sanctuary with these flags meant to represent all peoples and nations. Traditionally, today is often called Three Kings Day or Little Christmas, and 
perhaps when you were children, you celebrated that too, perhaps with gifts in a, in a stocking or in a shoe on, on Epiphany Day. I know I did as a small boy. These names, Three Kings Day and Little Christmas, point to a tradition of the epiphany of Jesus to the Magi, who offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The Magi and their gifts are also certainly evocative of Revelation chapter 21, which is hinted at in the final verse, verse 5 of the opening hymn that we sang tonight, of the new Jerusalem where there will always be light and no darkness. And in chapter 21 of Revelation, it says that the nations will bring their gifts and their glory into the new Jerusalem. So these flags don't simply represent modern governments or modern nation states. Rather, they represent, in the purest sense, people and the gifts of their cultures and the means through which God works through us in our languages, our cultures, so that God might continue to be revealed in Jesus Christ among the nations. Epiphany reminds us that our celebration of Christ's birth is not about really about the gifts we give to one another. It is about what we will offer Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the Gospel reading, we see very clearly that King Herod and the people of Jerusalem were said to be filled with fear rather than joy at the birth of the Messiah. They feared that the Messiah might shake things up. Perhaps Herod feared being disposed, deposed or, or losing his position or his political power. And so King Herod met not openly but secretly with the Magi so that he alone could attempt to handle the situation, disposing of the child and protecting his political fortunes. Instead, the Messiah was born to shake things up, so to speak. The prophet Haggai wrote, I will shake the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come. I will fill his house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. And so the Magi traveled from nations far away from Bethlehem, led by a star that we have in our sanctuary symbolizing that star, and they offered their gifts to Jesus so that the splendor of the Messiah might be revealed to the world. On this quiet January the 6th evening, we also realize that we still live in a world in need of a Savior, a world in which the nations might offer their gifts to Christ rather than sending their weapons against one another. On Epiphany, we remember God's eternal love for this world and its people. Paul addressed this theme in the, his letter to the Ephesians, writing that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to God's eternal purpose in Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate God's epiphany to this world, and it is our ongoing work as a church to continue to make that peace and love of Christ known in this world. We continue to celebrate the epiphany of Christ to the na nations as God's eternal purpose for us and for all people. God loves this world and its people. When will we finally fully listen to him? and cease our conflict and our wars with one another. Epiphany leaves each of us with a question. What will I offer to, to Christ Jesus? The most precious gift that any of us, of course, has is our lives. Imagine this world if each person would simply offer their neighbor the gift of their life. The Magi offered, them, offered him their gifts. Their witness to us invites us to offer our gifts and our lives to Christ and our neighbor once again. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us be together in prayer. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the Church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Eternal God, bless the whole Church with your grace and wisdom. Help us to reveal your Son to the nations. Lead churches and the religions into deeper ecumenical and interreligious relationships of peace that together your glory might be revealed among all nations. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creating God, restore your glory to the earth. Protect fragile ecosystems, rainforests, coral reefs, wetlands, prairies, and shorelines. Guide us to treasure the amazing diversity of animals and plants that share this world with us so that future generations might also know your abundance. God of grace, hear our prayer. Righteous God, bring the nations into the way of justice and peace. Strengthen those who work for human rights, equality, and the protection of the most vulnerable. We pray for all in public office, that they may serve all people with integrity and faithfulness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Delivering God. Help us to help those who have no one to help them. Bless all who care for the sick and dying and transform the systems of this world that enable racism and discrimination so that oppression and violence toward the weak, different, or vulnerable might come to an end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Abiding God, accompany the ministries of this congregation in the coming year. Inspire those who lead, worship, teach, visit, pray, feed the hungry, and serve the community. Strengthen our partnerships and bless all who come to this church seeking life, forgiveness, and your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, as the saints lived and died trusting in your promises, guide us by their example until we are gathered with them into your eternal kingdom of peace, light, and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, our creator, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on all their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this, this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Jesus, grant you grace and truth, and the Spirit send peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim this good news. Thanks be to God.
Please join us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays with inspiring music and talented musicians as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the sacraments together. We are a congregation that helps children, youth, and families grow together in Christ with events for children and youth, a confirmation program, educational activities, mission trips and retreats to camps like Luther Ridge that help young people and families grow in faith and service to others. St. Mark's is a place for families and people of all generations to grow together in Christ. St. Mark's is a church with a servant's heart. Each Thursday, St. Mark's Soup Kitchen feeds our neighbors. We also partner with local schools and nonprofit organizations. We participate in Kairos Prison Ministry Weekends, sending cookies as a sign of our love. We follow Jesus in mission, offering food, shelter, and hope to those in need. And we are blessed by local artists, musicians, and ecumenical relationships. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ by helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service,